All right. Has this been good for you guys so far? Again, we're two and a half hours in. I know this is a lot to cover in, in a short period of time, which is why, again, the replay will be coming out for you guys because uh, I definitely want you guys to be able to to, to dive in deeper. Um, also, in the members area, what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll break it down into sections. So if you wanted to look at – just focus on just the content creation, just – the webinar, each of the individual pieces, you'll be able to see that as well instead of having to watch the entire like eight hour thing again, you know, whatever it ends up being. So um, that's kind of the game plan. All right, cool. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna jump back in then. So the next thing I wanna talk about, because uh, one of the, uh, I, I almost felt like I, I shouldn't, for a long time I thought like this wasn't that important to, to share, um, but after years and years and years of doing this, it's amazing how, boring and unprolific um, most people are when they don't think about it. So um, when, I, when I got started doing this, I just kind of did it and I, I didn't realize what I was doing or not doing. It took me a long time to figure it out and uh, and it's really the, kind of the, the key to this whole thing. Um, you've got to be prolific in your content. Okay, If you're not, your messages are not going to be spread. Your ideas aren't. People will buy what they will refund. Um, everything you're doing will come to a screeching halt if you as an expert are not prolific. So what is being prolific? Being prolific, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's being, it's, it's, it's teaching and educating and sharing and, and showing stuff in a way that, uh, that is cool. It's different. That's, that's unique. Um, and, uh, it really is, it really is important because if you don't do that, um, like I said, you're going to bore people really, really quick. Um, I can't tell you how many times like we see weight loss people who come and they're like, Hey, so my weight loss in course, my weight loss course, we're going to focus on eating less calories than you, uh, than you burn each, each month. And we're going to focus on the four food groups or this, whatever it is now, the, the food pyramid. And we're going to, all the stuff that's like the, the, the stuff people can get at school, the people that they, they can get anywhere. Like that's not what makes you exciting. The reason why Dave, the bulletproof executive, right? The reason why he is so good is that he's prolific. He brought in a whole new paradigm. Like he came in and started teaching people like, Hey, instead of like eating uh whole wheat, you should be drinking butter coffee for breakfast. Like like that's prolific. It's different. It gets people talking. It gets things, it makes things interesting. Okay. And so you've got to be prolific when you're, when you're speaking. Otherwise your messages will not be spread. Okay. It's, it's just vital. It's very important. So the first way you make your content be prolific is by using the attractive character. Now I could go on literally for a day teaching just attractive character stuff, but we don't have time for that in the context of this training. Uh, in the members area, I'll put a bunch more training about the attractive character so that those who, who stick through the rebuild rate, you'll get a bunch of really cool training there as well. But the attractive character is, it's the character, it's the personality of the expert. Okay, it's the personality and the way you communicate with your audience through everything from a marketing standpoint, from a content standpoint, from all these different areas. Okay, and so you're going to be using the attractive character all the time and, and weaving in your stories and your things throughout this whole process. So um, I'm going to go really quickly through this because, again, I don't want to spend a ton of time and we'll have a more like I think, I think it's like a 60 or 90 minute training in the members area just on attractive character. But the attractive character, uh, when I first started using this in my business, had a huge impact on me uh, and on the money I made, which is really cool, right? Um, I, I first learned this from a guy named John Olinus, and John is, uh, is a pickup artist, okay? He teaches, he teaches men how to get women to approach them, okay? And I had him come and speak at one of my, my business events. I heard him speak one time, teach this concept somewhere else, and later I said, John, you need to come to my event and teach this because it's so good. And he got up in front of the room. I remember, I still remember like to this day, he said, look, you guys, you're selling whatever product or service you're selling. For me, the people I teach, I'm teaching men how to get women to come to them. But it's the exact same thing. He said, they're selling themselves. You're selling your information or you're selling your products or whatever. But he said, the reality is it all comes down to the laws of attraction. Okay. And um, he said that just like my men have to get women to be attracted to them, if you want people to buy your stuff, you've got to be attractive and you have to develop an attractive character. And this is where I first started hearing about this. And when I started doing that in my business, it, it totally transformed everything. I remember the first couple of times I spoke, the only stories I would tell were, were about kind of my, at the time I was still wrestling, so about my wrestling. And it was cool, but what was interesting is that the people that bought my product were always like the athletes and the wrestlers and things like that. And uh, I go. I remember speaking at this one event. It was five or six hundred people, and I gave this my my presentation, and I did awesome. I sold it a bunch. I got to the back of the room, and there were a whole bunch of guys back there. And we, you know, I made. I think we sold. 
I don't know, 70 or 80 grand for that presentation. It was it was a great day, right? A lot of money, really fun, met a lot of cool people, got to work with a bunch of really cool people. And then right after me, um, a woman got up. Her name is Allie Brown. Some of you guys may know Allie. And she got up and she gave a presentation teaching the exact same concept I had just taught about. And I remember sitting in the audience and feeling horrible. I'm like, oh man, I feel so bad for her. Like I took away her whole thunder. Everything that she's teaching right now, I just taught. And uh, and uh, I, I felt bad for her. And she got up and did her pitch at the end. And guess what happened? The entire room of women popped up and ran to the back and bought her thing. And sure enough, she beat me in sales that event. And I was just, I was blown away. And and uh, I moved on in my career a little bit a little longer, a couple years later, and my wife and I had had twins. And uh, we had to go through fertility and a bunch of stuff. And it was, it was a hard process. And I'd never shared that story publicly before. And some event I was at, and I don't know how it came up. Sometimes you're speaking your voice. You start saying things and you don't know how to stop it afterwards. But I started sharing my whole fertility story. In the middle, I'm like, why am I telling these people this? But I was going through the whole thing. And then I did my, my pitch at the end. And what was crazy is that a whole bunch of people ran to, um, to, the, back of the, to the back of the room. And when I got back there and I was processing the orders and stuff, I know something really interesting. The people in the back of the room were different. I still had the athletes and the men and the people who had been attracted to to what I was selling before, but now I had a whole new audience. All these like women and mothers and and uh, and uh, and grandmothers and and uh, different segment of people started buying from me because I shared a different part of my story. And so I found that throughout the last ten years of doing this, the different elements I share and different things will always attract different kind of people. And so. This attractive character piece that I'm showing you guys right now is is really fundamental and really key to everything you're doing. You have to learn how to how to do this because as the expert, if you want people to follow you, they're not going to follow the boring the boring character, right? They're going to follow the attractive character. And it does not mean you have to be good looking. Okay, you guys have seen my picture online. I'm 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 definitely not a good looking like I'm not like a great looking person. Right? I'm not Brad Pitt or something. Okay, I'm not talking about being good looking. I'm talking about having an attractive personality, okay? The one of the reasons why Liz is crushing it right now, you guys saw her on the video, right? She's just like so such a fun personality and she's bubbly and she shares story and she's just she's perfect, right? And so that's what you guys need to be doing as well is creating a character like that that people will fall in love with, okay? So here's some of the, the core aspects of the attractive character. The first thing over here on the left-hand side are the elements of the attractive character. Okay, every attractive character has a backstory, okay? Sometimes you might call it an origin story. Can okay, you think about origin story? You probably think of um, of like superheroes, right? Every good superhero has a backstory that tells that how they came from wherever they're at to where they are today. Okay, if you don't have a backstory and if you don't share it with your audience, then guess what? You will be unrelatable to to them. You look like this person who's completely perfect who figured this thing out. Okay, but if you have a backstory, it says, "Look, I was where you are at right now. I learned some really really cool stuff, and now check out where I am today." That's what sells. People see where you, if, if you can go to where they're at and you can show that you were in the same spot they were at through your backstory and then show them that you, you, you uh, blazed this trail and you found the answer, that is what people, that, what, that's what gets people to relate to you. Okay? The reason why Bulletproof Executive, right, Dave does so good is because guess what? He used to be like 300 pounds overweight. And then without exercise, without doing anything, just by drinking his butter coffee, all of a sudden he lost all his weight and boom. That is an attra- that's a backstory because people can relate to that. He's meeting them where they're already at. So backstory is key, okay? An origin story. And you're going to be using this in your presentation. You're going to be using it in a lot of different places. Next are parables, okay? Uh, attractive characters speak in parables and stories, okay? I, I, I should go back after and watch this webinar and see how many stories I've told you guys because um, the, the greatest teachers in the world, they, they speak in parables. And so you guys got to figure out, like, what aspects of your life, uh, when, like, when things happen, like, What's a parable that you can use to, to, to um, help your audience understand a concept? Like when I first started teaching people how to, how to create information products, um, I, I wasn't really so much focusing on like them focusing on their expertise, but just creating like niche products, right? And for me, I had this little potato gun that um, when I was uh, spring break one year, after my wife and I got married, um, my wife had to work and I was bored sitting at home doing nothing because uh, I couldn't go anywhere for spring break. So my buddy and I, we went and we found some potato gun plans online, went to Home Depot, we built a bunch of potato guns, went out there and shot them and had a ton of fun with it. Uh, the next day, I went, or next week, <clears throat> the next week I went back to school and I was searching online and, and uh, I found this site that you could see how many people were searching on Google for, for a different keyword. I typed in potato gun and sure enough, 18,000 people that month besides me had searched for potato guns. 
and I looked and there was no products out there, so I decided to create a potato gun product. And I, I went back to my buddy, we, we made a DVD, we went down to Home Depot, we bought the pipes, we glued them together, and we made a, a, a how-to video of how to make a, a potato gun. And I created that product, I put up a little website, and put my ads out in front of those 18,000 people, and really quickly I had my very first information product. Okay, that's the parable I tell people to help them understand that you can create products in any niche you want, right? So there's one parable I share. Okay, there's tons of parables that if you guys, if you guys keep listening to my training, and you go through other things, you'll notice that I, I have a whole like portfolio of parables that I use to illustrate different concepts. Okay, and you got to start doing the same thing for yourself. As you're teaching different things, you got to have different parables to kind of illustrate those those things. Okay, because that's what makes the, the, your teaching interesting. Okay, the difference between having a boring product and an exciting product is like 99% parables and stories and things like that. So you gotta start identifying. When something happens in your life, you gotta stop and be like, how can I turn this into a parable that I can explain to my people they'll somehow get them to, to do what I need them to do, okay? And so start keeping track of that. And a lot of times they don't have to be your parables either. You can share other people's parables. Um, I know that, uh, that one of my friends, she told me that uh, for years she taught information marketing and she always would share my potato gun story because that was that story is what related to her and when she would share it with people they would be they get the aha moment and she used my parable so you don't always have to have all these parables your own but you need to find stories to illustrate all the concepts that you're trying to teach okay all right uh, next is character flaws nobody likes uh, nobody likes somebody who's perfect they can't relate to that. And so one of the hard things you guys are going to find is it's really hard and scary at first to share your character flaws. But you also find that it's necessary. When people see that you have flaws and, and things like that, that's what that that's what makes you relatable. That's what gets them interested in you. Okay? And so <coughs> character flaws is uh, is important. And uh, and then number four is polarity. And I'm going to talk about it here again in a minute. But if your content is just neutral, neutrality is boring. It does not inspire action. Okay? Polarity, being different and being unique, that's what gets people to, to pay attention. Okay. I always have people like, well, I don't want to offend anyone. You know, I don't I don't I don't want to like, you know, some people aren't gonna believe this or, or agree with me. I, I want to be neutral and be, you know, I wanna please everybody. And when you do that, you can't make money. Okay. Every time I've tried to be neutral in my marketing and in my content and my products, it, it's boring and nobody buys it. It causes, it, it's essential that you have some polarity because that's what gets people to take action and to listen. Okay, and I'll show some more examples of that here in a minute. Uh, so that's kind of the first thing of the elements of the attractive character. These are things you're gonna be weaving throughout everything. Next is your identity. Which one of these characteristics fits you the best? One is the leader, okay? One is the adventurer or the crusader. One is the reporter or the evangelist where you're interviewing people and you're you're finding out information for them and for yourself and the number four is the reluctant hero Relu reluctant hero is kind of my favorite where um you know you didn't ever have you know you never wanted to become this expert you uh you were more kind of out there and and uh and you saw all these people struggling and so finally you decided to share what you were what you were doing with a couple of your friends and it worked for them and so they wanted you to share with some more people and boom because of because of this you became this reluctant hero okay so for you guys you got to kind of figure out which identity resonates best with you. Again, some of you guys, it's like, I'm the leader, boom. Some of you guys are like, I'm an adventurer. I'm going out there, I'm doing and testing and trying these things out. I want to bring back all, all of my adventures to you and show you what the cool stuff that I found. Okay, the reporter, again, is going to interview and other experts and bringing that information back. And then the reluctant hero we talked about. A lot of times, if you're just getting started and you're nervous, the reporter is a lot of times the best identity to begin with. Like for example, when I started internet marketing, I didn't know much about internet marketing. I just wanted to learn. So I became the reporter. And I started interviewing people and asking them questions and I would record those interviews. And that became, um, in fact, my, the very first product I ever made that did over a million dollars in sales was a product called The 12-Month Millionaire. And I found this dude who wrote a book uh, called The 12-Month Millionaire. And, uh, and I called him on the phone and he allowed me to interview him. And I interviewed him for six hours. He told me the story about how he went, how he made hundred million dollars in 23 months, and he spent six hours with the phone on me. I recorded the entire thing and then sold the interview. Can I promise you guys that most of the authors on Amazon have never had anyone interested in their book? If you were to email them tonight and say, "Hey, your book's awesome. Can I can I re, can I interview you?" Most of them will allow you to interview them, and and you can create a ton of really good products and content and things that way. So there's kind of the reporter. All right. So again, you're gonna pick one of these identities, and for me, my identity's kind of shifted throughout my, my career as an expert, and yours probably will as well. A lot of times, again, it begins as a reporter. Eventually, you, sh you transition over to a reluctant hero, or maybe it's more the leader, whichever one makes the most sense for your personality, okay? 
And the last part of the attractive character are storylines. And these storylines you're going to use throughout your presentation, through your marketing, everything. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but you got loss and redemption. Okay, I had this thing and I lost it, but I was able to fight my way back. And now I've got this, this secret, right? Us versus them. Okay, if you're an expert in something, what's, what's the opposite of whatever it is you're teaching? Okay, uh, the us versus them is, is a key here. Before and after. A lot, I, was, I used to be fat, now I'm skinny. I used to be broke, now I'm rich. Okay, before and after stories. Amazing discoveries. Check out what I found as an expert. Secret telling. Okay, most of my stuff is secret telling if you haven't noticed. And then third-party testimonials. So those different storylines you can weave into a whole bunch of things. Your emails, your marketing, your, your, your webinar. But these are just things to understand. This is how I, I use and I manipulate my attractive character to get people to buy and to give me money so that I can infect and I can change their life. Okay, so I, I'll share different parts. That, I'll share different parables to attract different people. Um, I'll say things that are going to repel some people and attract other people. Um, I use different identities that'll, that'll um, resonate with the different people because everyone's going to everyone's going to be a little different. Okay, so that's the attractive character stuff. Again, guys, in the members area, I'll put a whole bunch more training on that if you want to dig deeper, and you should. Uh, next thing here that I think is important um, about making your content prolific is you have to increase your own personal teachability index. Now, the first time I ever heard this, I've only heard it once was this dude named Kevin Trudeau, and uh, Kevin's in jail right now for doing a lot of shady things. So don't follow everything Kevin said, but he had this one product called uh, Your Wish Is Your your Own Command or something like that, and I went through it, and one thing that was really good that I, I really that I got from that that was powerful was he talked about teachability index. He said, if you look at most people, he said that when they, um, when they, uh, when they start, um, when they when they're kids, right? Your teachability index is high. Like I've got four kids right now. My wife's got number five on the way right now, and uh, and their kid, my kids are teachable. Right? I share anything, and they just, like sponges. They soak it up. Okay, most of us are very teachable through elementary school, and then junior high, and then high school, and then some of us go to college, and you you're learning all this stuff, and you love it. And then what happens the second you get your diploma? For almost everyone I know. In, the, in this world, they get their diploma, they have a little hat on their head, and boom, their teachability disappears overnight. Because they're educated, because they have a degree, they know everything, and they're, they're not, no longer teachable. Okay, This is where I struggle the most when I try to help people. Um, like right now, it's, it's funny like with this whole life hacking thing. Like I'm doing some crazy stuff that's having huge dramatic impacts on my weight and on my energy and on my physiology and all these things. And as I share it with people, everyone just like shuts down because nope, I don't believe it. Nope, that's against everything I've ever heard in the past. Nope, and they won't listen. And so because of that, they're not they're not getting all this amazing stuff that could change their life. Okay, now what you're gonna the problem you're gonna have is, as an expert is you've got this core set of things in your mind right now that that are your belief patterns. Okay, and the problem with that, those things are good. That's what's gonna lead your content and lead you moving forward. But you have to become teachable because um, if you don't become teachable then uh, you're going to miss out on so many cool things. And so what I'd recommend doing is, and this ties into your Dream 100, this ties into your podcast and you're interviewing people, is you need to start making it a point right now that if you're going to be an expert in this industry, you've got to open your mind and, and be open to new ideas and new thoughts that are completely against what you, what you may even think are possible right now. Okay, I know for me, like my teachability index was very, very low. After I launched my business, I was making money, and all of a sudden, like, I thought I knew everything and my teachability index went to almost zero, right? And it wasn't until um, I went to a Tony Robbins event and he started sharing some things with me. And uh, and at first I was just, I really resisted. I'm like, nope, nope, this guy's crazy. And I remember after a little while, I think and a big part of it is because I respected Tony. A lot of times we may not, not respect somebody, so it's easier for us to say no to him. But because I respect him so much, I was like, you know what? For the last day, I keep like shutting down everything he's been saying. And, and I feel like I'm missing out on, on some of the benefit of this. And w- what I'm going to do for the next day or half, two days, is instead of saying no to every concept he throws out there, I'm going to change it from no to what if. Just that little shift, okay? Because no, as soon as you say no, everything shuts down. If I say what if, then it opens up this cool exploration. Right? So what if that was possible? What if that actually did work? What if, what if, what if? And he started sharing things. I'd say what if? And some things after I would run through my testament in my head and I would try things out, I, I would I would say I don't like that or I don't believe in that part of it. But other things opened up whole worlds of opportunities to me, whole new things that I never even dreamt and thought about were possible. Really interesting. So for you guys, is in your area of expertise, um, it's very, very important to become teachable and to go and try to get knowledge from as many places as you can. Read books, 
podcasts, interview people, all these things. And instead of saying no when they bring new ideas to the table, say what if and see what happens. And I promise you when you do that, your mind will expand, your content will become more prolific, you'll be able to help more people, you'll be able to help them, help them in unique ways that, that weren't even possible to you a little while ago, let alone to, to the rest of the world. Okay, so it's very important, you guys, to, to become very, very, very teachable. All right. Um, um, and then after hearing Kevin Turtle's Teachability Index, I invented my Prolific Index. So this is all mine. <laughs> this is how my Prolific Index works, okay? Here is the Prolific Index. Now, we all know the crazy people, right? There's dudes that are crazy, right, over here on both sides of the spectrum. And in the middle, there's like mainstream. This is stuff you learn in school. Okay. Now I want to tell you the mainstream stuff that you learn in school. There's no money in it. Okay. If I can learn accounting at school, I'm not gonna be able to make money with it online. Okay. It's not gonna happen. Now if you go to the edges over here is crazy. Okay. Now crazy is 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 good because it's 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 um, polarity all those kind of things. But on the edge of crazy, nobody's gonna give you any money. Do you wanna know why? Because they think you're crazy. Okay, so it's very important to understand. Mainstream, no one's giving you money. Crazy, no one's giving you money. But there's this little spot right in between, between mainstream and crazy. That's where you start making money. That's where people will pay you for your ideas and pay you for your expertise on both directions here. Okay, so for you, you got to understand that up to this point in your life, for a lot of you guys, you've gone through mainstream tr traditional learning, right? You you uh, you went to school, you got a degree, you got education, you've been studying this stuff, you've been using it, and now you're an expert. But the problem is you're an expert in very mainstream stuff and there's no money in the mainstream. Okay, so it's time for you to open up your teachability index, start looking for new ideas, new thoughts, and new things, and start venturing towards the crazy side. Now don't go to crazy. If you go all the way to crazy, you you, you, you miss the whole point. But that's where you start getting ideas that are different, that are prolific, that'll get people to, to, to think and get people to respond, okay? I go back to, to Bulletproof Executive because I think Dave is a perfect example of this, right? Um, mainstream is, what do you got? You got your your food pyramid or four food groups, right? You got to have your wheats and your vegetables and your this and that, and, right? That's mainstream, right? Then on the side over here, you got insane people who like literally, I, I bought a DVD called, uh, uh, I think it's called Sun Gazers, Sun Gazing. And it's these people who live out like in Africa and they just look at the sun all day. They don't eat, they haven't eaten in like years. They just look at the sun and they say all nutrients you can get are from the sun, okay? Maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but it's on the crazy side. No one's going to give you money if you say, hey, never eat again, just look at the sun. A little bit too crazy. But in the middle there, where all of a sudden Dave finds out, hey, all this, this wheat stuff is really, really bad for you. He watch, you read Wheat Belly or you um, look at the Atkins diet or you look at some things that's really, really bad. Okay? And you look at fats are actually really, really good for you. Okay? And all these things are happening. And all of a sudden, you move away from the mainstream, from here's the food pyramid, to venturing towards crazy, but you stop in the middle where it's prolific, where people are like, wow, this is a new idea. It's something I haven't even considered before. Let me test it. And they test it, they get a result, and they want to dig deeper into that. And that's where the money's at, you guys. So if your content is very, very important for you to understand that and to be willing to kind of venture away from the mainstream because there's not going to be money there, okay? One of our students right now, we've been struggling because she's, uh, she's in accounting and, and uh, she's trying to sell accounting stuff. I'm like, that's not... That that's mainstream. No one's gonna 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 do that. Like, and then you got like, you know. So here's the counting over here. Here's like crazy tax stuff that gets you thrown in jail on the crazy side. But there's a sweet spot in the middle there where it's tax savings and it's it's how to lower your you know what you pay the government, like how to do uh, trust funds and uh, whatever all that stuff right there. That's like the prolific spot. That's where people will pay you money because it's it's not what they learn in school and it's not crazy. Okay, so there's your prolific index. One guy at our last event asked me, he said, well, how crazy is too crazy? And I said that um, when they stop giving you money, they're, they're, you're probably off the, off the deep end. So um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense, you guys. But it, you do have to kind of stretch outside of your comfort zone a lot of times, okay? This kind of comes back to the whole thing I talked about, neutrality and polarity, okay? Neutrality right here, if you're neutral in the middle here, there's not much money. But when you're polar, that's where the money's at, Okay. All right, let me see where we are at. All right, cool. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is your funnel. Now, um, I kind of struggled when I was putting this presentation together because I did a presentation a little while ago. It, it was another long one. It was another master class like this. I think it ended up being at four hours long. And I shared all of the different funnels that we use in our business. And there were like nine different types of funnels. I talked about front-end funnels, back-end funnels, middle funnel, all sorts of stuff. And part of me wanted to really share all that stuff with you guys right now. But I think, 
again, if, if the goal of this, if, if the premise when I got started was let's build you guys, let's show you guys a system that'll get you from starting to cash the fastest, it's not going to be showing you guys a whole bunch of different types of funnels. Now, in the future, after you're making money, like Liz right now, we're coming back saying, now what's the next kind of funnel you should add to this thing? Um, but for right now, to, to serve you guys the most, I'm not going to share with you guys everything because I don't think that's what you need. I think you need what's going to be the fastest path to cash. Let's focus on that and then we can move on, right? So with your funnels, there's a lot of kind of funnels, okay? And if you guys have ever gone through training with me before, you probably heard me talk about a value ladder, okay? Um, here's the value ladder. On the left-handed axis here, we've got our value. and the right-hand side, we've got our, our price. Now, ideally, up here at the top, this is where we provide the most amount of value for people and where they're paying us the most amount of money, okay? So for my business right now, we have got, uh, well, we've got two. We've got a $25,000 um, inner circle program that's our top of our value ladder. We actually have one higher than that. That's uh, It's a million dollar program. Where people pay $100,000 down, then 10% of their income up to a million dollars. Um, so we have a million dollar program. But for, for argument for this, I'm going to just talk about my $25,000 program. Okay, so here it is right here. Now, my question for you guys is if, if you never met me before, never heard from me, and I walk up to you off the street and I'm like, hey, my name is Russell. I love the internet. I love making money on it. I'm pretty good at it. If you give me $25,000, I'll help you turn your idea into a, into a sustainable business. How many of you guys would say yes? Okay, a couple. Stanzik would say yes, because that's what he did. Now look at him, super successful. But most people are gonna say no. They're gonna say, are you crazy? Like, you provided no value to me. How do I know you're, you're, uh, you're, you're not legitimate, right? Okay, most people are gonna say no to that. So what we do is we have to create a value ladder. We're down here, we give them some value and they try it, they test it out. If they receive value, then they're gonna to wanna to naturally ascend up the, the value ladder. And if they receive value at this level, they're gonna to wanna to move up again. If they receive value here, they can keep moving up and then keep moving up this, uh, this value ladder, okay? So that's kind of what a value ladder is. Um, and so if you look at like, in our business, we have a very uh, mature value ladder. I got a lot of products and services with a goal of, of moving somebody up this, uh, up this value ladder, right? And so, for example, I have, let's say, I, I have a book called Dotcom Secrets Labs. It's a free book we give away. And somebody buys it, they, they get it for free, but they pay shipping and handling. They get this book, it's like, I don't know, 140 pages of all my split tests. And if they read that, they're like, wow, this is awesome stuff. I can't believe Russell shared this for free. What else has he got? And then a few days later, they get a call from some of my team and they're like, hey, did you like this? How'd you like to join Russell's uh, Ignite program? It's $10,000 and you get this, this, and this. And because they receive value, now for them to say yes to the next thing is not that, not that difficult. Okay, and it's easy now to send them up if they're receiving value at every step along the way. Okay, so that's the value ladder. Now, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to this because I don't think it's important for what we're doing right now. So here here's our here's our value ladder, right? Um, now, in this value ladder, there's different types of funnels. There's front end funnels, middle value ladder funnels, high t you know back end back end funnels. So different funnels we use. And so again, that whole that other presentation I gave, which some of you guys may have seen it already, goes through all these, right? What's a free plus shipping funnel? What's a self-liquidating offer funnel? What's a perfect webinar funnel? What's an invisible funnel? What's a product launch funnel? What's a high ticket funnel? What's a black box funnel? Continuity funnel, micro continuity funnel. Okay, we covered all of those. And again, what I, what I wanna do for the sake of this training, though, is I wanna focus on just one funnel, the funnel that's gonna get you to make cash the fastest, uh, the funnel that ascends somebody up the value ladder the fastest, and that's the perfect webinar. Okay, the perfect webinar is nice because um, somebody registers for a free webinar, it doesn't cost them any money. They come on this webinar presentation, you educate them, you train them, you give them a bunch of really good stuff, and after that process is over, then they, uh, you offer them a product, and you're offering a $25,000 product, but usually you're offering some, something from $300 to $1,000, and in a 60 to 90 minute presentation, you can give enough value that somebody will give you, you know, 300 to a thousand dollars and so that's gonna be focusing on right now okay now long term my goal with you guys is to get you guys into my ignite program or get you guys into my inner circle and when we do that then my goal is help you build out front ends and back ends and continuities all these other things but for right now I just want you guys making money as quick as possible okay and so that's why we're focusing uh, for this whole training on the perfect webinar all right